What is up, y'all? Listen, if you missed out on Peak Partnership 2022, then you have been living in absolute FOMO for an entire year. And you know what? I don't want that for you. But I got good news for you. Peak Partnership 2023 is coming up. So, man, we can't wait for you to join us in Orlando, Florida. It's February 17th to the 19th. And I'll tell you this, it'll be an even bigger and better event. We're talking more people to network with, more opportunities, more multifamily opportunities, awesome headliners. And of course, your boy Tyler Devereaux is going to be up there speaking as well. It's the event of the year, and I can promise you this, you will not want to miss out. So listen, visit mfmpeakpartnership.com. I'll say it again, mfmpeakpartnership.com for more details and reserve your seat right freaking now. This event is going to be epic. You do not want to miss out, so click the link in our description to register. Sincerely, what are you waiting for? Click the freaking link, mfmpeakpartnership.com and register, and I cannot wait to see y'all there. Aloha. All right, Aloha and welcome to another Aloha Friday episode. Man, I am very excited about today's episode. We have those of y'all who are watching on YouTube, you can already see, but in my book, man, we have one of the best speakers in the entire world. And I, I would rank you like top three speakers, communicators in the entire world. Wow. And uh, Wow. And you'll see today, you'll see as you, as you listen, if you don't know this man, this is, and if you're listening, you don't know who this is, this is Inky Johnson. Mm. Uh, Inky, first, welcome to the podcast, man. No, man, it's an, it's an honor, man. Extreme honor, bro. Got a lot of respect and admiration for you. And so today, man, it's, it's a privilege for me to be here with you. Thank you, Absolutely. man. Absolutely. Glad you feel that way because <laughs> I'm grateful to have you here, man. Thank and you, man. Uh, those of you, you'll, you'll see... Inky's one of the best communicators in the entire world. Just how you say things, man. You're, you're so gifted with how you say things. Thank you, man. And I know that that is, I believe that you were called to do that, mm. but I also believe it's something I know. It's something that you have worked at and dialed in. And I know, mm. you, you know we've talked about how when you go on drives, you see something and you, yeah. you know, and you, you know, give a, a, a presentation about Absolutely. it. And it's like, bro, yeah, I man. love that journey, right? Like, I just Absolutely. love like somebody who, who uh, we were talking about this off camera, but somebody who excels at any level mm -hmm. and how you, you like you master that craft. So oh, no anyway. question, man. No excited question. to have you here, man. There are so many directions and ways that I want to take this, but I'll start with this question, man. You are uh, one of the most inspirational speakers on the entire planet mm. that you inspire me, dude, on a day-to-day -day basis. I've mentioned multiple things to you, but who inspires Inky Johnson? Like who yeah. is that person that's been, had, a huge impact on your life and where mm -hmm. does the greatest, you know, motivator go to get motivation? Man, you know, it's, it's, it's interesting, man. Um, quite obviously my mom, right? Because that's somebody that I could see, touch and be with every single day. And, uh, I watched my mother and how she raised me, right? And the conditions that I was raised in and the mindset that she raised me with. Um, it was second to none, right? I can honestly say I am the man that I am today because of my mother. You know, I watched my mother work a double shift at Wendy's. She never made an excuse. I watched when my mother didn't have reliable transportation and she still did what she had to do to get me to where I needed to get to. But also, man, you know, when you're younger and you think about life and the lens that you see it through, it's different. And so when my mother and my father you know, they first brought me into the world. My father wasn't as present. And so I didn't always value the relationship either, even when he came back around and he was trying to teach me certain things, right? And so our relationship started to get patched up, but it was a lot of sacrifices and a lot of things that my father did for me when I was younger that I didn't value because I had so much resentment and anger because his presence wasn't present at the time. But now the man that I am, the husband that I am, the father that I am, the grandfather that my father is, the father that he is, my father inspired me. Somebody asked me a question uh, one day, Tyler, and I thought about it when I had a son. And I had never thought about this before, right? A gentleman asked me the question. He said, what if your son treated you the way that your father, you know, acted with you when you were young, right? What if your son treated you that way? And I was like, uh, what do you mean by that? He was like, you know how you treated your father even when he was trying to come back around in your life and how you kind of resented him? What if your son did that to you? I was like, I don't know if I'll be able to take that. 
And he said, now think about that. And your father still showed up and tried to forge the relationship. And I said, I never thought about it that way. And so I would have to say my mother and my father, because of what they did for me when I was younger, but also present day, the people that they are and the fight, the struggle and the opposition that we've had as a family. Pro. Yeah. What a great answer, man. Of course. What a great answer. So much of that resonates with me so much. Like single mom, my mom Mm. is a beast, dude. No question. She's a beast. No question. And uh, my dad is one of the, he's a great dude too. Nice. It's what's interesting. What you just said is I had resentment towards my dad and I Mm. love my dad. My dad is literally like, he has a great, he's a great dude. He has a great heart. Nice. Um, but one thing that stuck with me is that, which is interesting is because what you just said, it's like, I know that I'm going to make mistakes and really? I don't want my kids to hold those against me, right? Absolutely. And so to have that open heart, yeah. bro, I love that. When did, when yeah. did like, so, so your mom, so when did that change for you, for your dad? I'm going to, I'm going to lean yeah. it this way. And then Absolutely. we're going to get into some of your story, man. There's so many questions I want to ask you, but mm-hmm. when did that change, that perspective change? Was it with that yeah. conversation you were telling me about? Yeah, man, with the conversation and also just, you know, living with opposition, and adversity, man, and and just watching people and how life unfolds. Like I always say to people, man, like when you live with adversity and opposition, it teaches you, right? Not only about yourself, it teaches you about other people. Yeah. And so just as I think and I reflect about life and me and my father's relationship now, it was just a lot of things that I didn't see. Like I often say, sometimes you can't see the picture when you're in the frame, right? And it was a point in time in my life to where I was in the frame And I just couldn't see some of the sacrifices and some of the things that my father had done for me because there was a level of emotion there. And once I removed the emotion, me and my father had dialogue and our relationship became closer. And then I had kids and my father came in the picture even more. And I just started to think about things different and had a perspective shift. And it just made me look at things with a level of conviction about the man that I wanted to become. And also, man, like, I'm just a firm believer. I subscribe to the train of thought. Everybody deserves grace, bro. You know what I'm saying? Like everybody deserves grace, no matter where they are, what they've done, where they come from, right? Everybody deserves grace. And I always say to people, if you haven't needed it yet, it's going to come a point in time to where you're going to need it and you're going to hope that people give it to you, right? And so when you're in the position to give it, extend it. Yeah. Amen, man. Amen. Some of the most impactful situations in my life or when people extended grace to me, you know? Absolutely. And so it gives you that different perspective. I love that, No bro. question, man. It's awesome. No question. Bro, tell me about your journey. You know, you talk mm. about your mom and how she's one of your biggest inspirations. And I here I know a lot about your story and I'm excited. If you, if you don't know about Inky's story, yeah. dude, p- put your freaking seatbelt on. <laughs> it's incredible. But I, I believe a lot of what you did and have done and continue to do, and you kind of even alluded to this, but it was because of that sense of responsibility. Like it, it would almost be disrespectful not to do that with all that your mom did and all that she grinded to, you know, to provide. But tell me about your story, man. Where, where yeah. did you grow up? What, yeah. what are some challenges that you've seen Absolutely. and uh, overcome? Man, grew up uh, inner city Atlanta. I born to my mother at 16. She took me back to Kirkwood. That was the area in Atlanta, southeast corner, a two-bedroom home, 14 people at 125 Warren. And... Um, most of my family members, man, we were growing up in a condition to where we saw it all. We were exposed to it all at an early age and, um, you know, crime, everything, drugs. And it was a limited belief because most of my family members didn't graduate high school, right? Didn't do much after school once they dropped out. And so when I came along as a kid, and we're growing up in this two-bedroom home with 14 people, I wanted to change that. Yeah. And not only did I want to change it, I believed I could change it. And like I often tell people, man, like I'll never forget the first time I said to my cousins, you know, we started playing football in the street. And I'll never forget, bro, I said to them, like, man, I want to make it to the NFL. Like if I make it to the NFL, you know, maybe we can get our own beds one day, right? We just wanted our own beds. We're sleeping on pallets, right? Like, man, if I make it to the NFL, maybe we can get grandma a better living condition, my mom better living condition. And they listened to me. Tyler, and it was like clockwork, bro. They responded and was like, yeah, that's cool, Inc., but nobody in our family has even graduated high school. Like, that's cool, bro, but like, the answer was already in place. Like, yeah, "Yeah, that's cool, but the chances of that happening are slim to none, right? And when I heard it, I knew it wasn't just a condition that I was facing. It was also a mentality 
that I was facing, right? And I would always say to my cousins, man, the idea, the idea is often more powerful than the person, right? What do I mean mm, by the idea is that. often more powerful than the person? The idea of me making it from two-bedroom home, 14 people, single mother, right? Going to college, first one in my family to go to college, coming from these extreme conditions. The idea, that idea is in New York. That idea is in Hawaii. That idea is in Florida. That idea is in California. Not just the person, the mm. idea, right? And so if I can do this, the idea of me being able to do that, like, man, we'll break barriers and generational curses forever because of the idea. But it was a lot of levels of adversity and opposition that I had to face and a lot of people that I'm extremely grateful for that seem to come in my life at every next level and help me and fuel me to the next level to get through the opposition and adversity to become the man that I now am. Bro, yeah. that yeah. part. No question. That part man. right there. The idea is more powerful than the person. Absolutely. Wow. Like that's yeah. such a powerful thing to, and that's on both fronts, right? That can go positive Absolutely. or negative, right? Absolutely. So what, what do you think, hmm? why do you believe like your idea that you had of like, hey man, I, <clears throat> Your belief, right? Like, I'm going to go and change this narrative for my family. Like, what Absolutely. made you believe that you could do that? Yeah. Like, nobody that you knew believed that. What made you believe, like, I'm that dude, I could do that? Yeah. Because I felt like if I didn't do it, it wasn't going to be done. Like, I feel like it comes along in organizations. It comes along in families. It comes along with teams to where you have an individual or you have individuals. And they have the capacity for the journey. Yeah. It's a lot of people that got the talent and the skill, but they don't have the capacity for the journey, right? What I mean by the capacity, the things that you have to face in order to sustain, to get to where you're trying to get to on the journey. And so for me, I felt as if if I didn't do it, it wasn't going to be done. And I had to make pivotal decisions and choices in my journey that I felt could benefit my family. One of being, when I got to high school, Todd, I was an athlete, man. I was pretty, pretty decent. I could play. And people came to my parents. And it was like, hey, man, you transfer ink to our school. Make sure he go to college, get a scholarship. Like, it'll be all good, yeah. right? And to them, this is a big deal because nobody in our family has went to college. Yeah. And so they're listening like, hey, ink, this is it, man. Like, let's just go to Tucker High School, go to another school so you can go to college. And I'm at a place that's one of the lowest performing public schools in the state, not just Atlanta, in the state. And people weren't going to college. And so I'm saying to them, nah, I can make it from Krim. And they're like, man, come on, Inc. Like, like, bro, like, here's your ticket. Like, take your ticket. Yeah. Go get it. Like, go make it happen. Right. And at the time, I always tell people, they transferred me, Tyler. And when they transferred me from Krim, it hurt me, man because I processed it wrong. I thought they didn't believe in me, right? But once I got kids, I looked at it totally different, yeah. right? Because they were making a lot of sacrifices as well. And so they were looking at the situation like, oh man, we're making these sacrifices. Let's put them in a position to make it happen. And so when I got to the school, I'm not proud of it, but I really didn't go to class. I was sitting in front of the school with a cop and I was like, hey man, like, I just don't want to be here. And he was like, man, just go to class and get your scholarship and ride out. I was like, no, man, I need to go back to Krim and make it. And everybody in the situation got tired of trying to convince me. And so they finally transferred me back to Krim. And I went to college from Krim High School and it was a big deal, right? Not only because of I, I wanted to go to college, I wanted to break a generational curse in my family. Nobody in my family had went to college, yeah. right? With my friends at the school. I wanted to show them like, nah, bro, we can make it from here. Like, I know what the world is saying. I know when they look at where we come from, what they say, but no, nah, we can do it. Yeah. And if I would have went to college from Tucker High School, it would have been great, but guys go to college from there every single year. Like, it's nothing, it's the norm there. Yeah. It's not the norm to do it from Krim with the conditions, the adversity and the opposition. And so when I did it, my friends started going to college. My cousins went to college. It changed generations, right? But I had to be the one willing to go over the hill with the white flag, take the bumps, take the bruises, have the capacity to say, no, nah, we can do this. And there's several decisions and choices that have to be made along that journey that's going to seem crazy, that's going to seem wild. But when you know, you know. And you have to be willing to accept whatever comes with it. Bro. 
purpose. That's unbelievable. It's unbelievable to me that you were thinking like that at what? What's this? Fifteen? Yeah, 16? absolutely. A yeah, teenager. It's just It's just you're you're different. Thank you're you. different, and I feel like like I feel that from watching and diving into your content. But bro, meeting you. I'm impressed with the communicator you are. I'm impressed with the speaker you are, with the athlete that you know you, that you, you were, and the, like uh, the dad that you are. But like that kind of stuff, like the person you are and the heart that Thank you, you have, is what like sets you apart. That I believe is your superpower, and uh, it's what you were called to do for a reason. It's like, and that's what I want people to pull from this this actionable that you just said. Why did you want to go back to cream? Because it wasn't about going to just. It wasn't about just going to college. It wasn't about just. It was about or just going to the NFL. It was about totally. changing the narrative for your family, breaking generational curses, and so Absolutely. purpose has to transcend self. And you had hmm. such a deep rooted purpose that has transcended self, and like the impact that you've made from there. Yeah, man, it's crazy, man. Absolutely, like, man. How that has changed your family. How that's changed the narrative. Right. Unbelievable, man. And. Uh, you know, I believe that that prepares you for just, for just so much. But I, I just believe that this is this. We were talking about this off camera too, but like I just believe that is this success principle mm. that you 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 take ownership for not only your journey but the journey of all those that follow you. you know? Man, it's 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 like extreme ownership, man. Yeah. Yes. You know what I'm saying? Like you own everything that comes along with it. Because the purpose and the mission is more important than the opposition. Yeah. Right? Like I often used to ask people, man, is the mission stronger than the opposition? Right? We got a mission. We got something we want to do. We got something we want to accomplish. Will it be stronger than the opposition and adversity that comes to see you along the journey? Yeah. Right? Because life is always going to come back, right? You got a goal. You got a dream. You got an aspiration. You want to do something for your children. want to do something for your mother. You want to do something for your company. As soon as you put it out into the atmosphere or the world or the universe, life is always going to hit back. Yeah. Life is always going to punch back. Life always going to send you back them body blows yeah. just to see. Let me see how bad he wanted. Like you said, you want to pay for your kid's college. Cool, right? Multifamily months. Okay, cool. You say you want to do it. Let's see. I'm going to hit you. Let's see where you hit back, where you fight back, right? I remember a cop telling me, like, when he asked me, what's your plan, little man? I, man, I, I plan on going D1. Yeah. Right? I'm just putting it out. That's me putting it out I love to it. the atmosphere. I'm going to go D1. Yeah. Cop responds back, you probably go to cell block D1. Oh, shit. I didn't expect to hear that. Yeah. That was life hitting back. Right? When he said it, he walked off. I walked with him. Tapped him on his shoulder. I thought it was a mistake. I'm like, I've never seen this guy before in my life. Yeah. Surely he thinks I'm somebody else. I was like, hey, man, like, I think you got the wrong guy. He was like, no, nah, I know about you. He was like, you had uncles coming to the same school. I was like, yes, sir. He said, they play ball just like you. I said, yes, sir. He said, aren't they serving time in prison? I was like, yes, sir. He said, the apple don't fall too far from the tree, right? I was like, man, I'm telling you, you got the wrong guy. He said, we'll see. I said, we will. Yeah. Right? And the first person I went to see after I got my scholarship papers to play football at the University of Tennessee was that cop. He was on lunchroom duty. I slid the table, slid the paper across the table to him. I'll never forget, Tyler. He stood up. He said, you thought when I said that to you, I was trying to crush you. I said, yeah, man, it came across that way. He said, don't get it twisted. He said, I've been at this school before you got here. I'm going to be here after you leave. He said, I heard so many people say what they were going to do. He said, so when I said that to you, life hidden back, I was just seeing where you're going to retreat and say, you know what, man? You're probably right. Due to my wow. conditions and my circumstances and my situation, you're probably right. I just said it to see, would you retreat? Or when I walked off, would you walk with me, tap me on my shoulder and say, nah, bro, I think you got the wrong guy, Yeah. right? Life is always going to hit back, right? People are resilient, man. I tell people often, people are amazing, man. And more times than not, it's not that a person doesn't have what it takes. It's that sometimes you don't realize it's going to take everything you got. Yeah, <laughs> there we go, bro. That it's just right going to, sometimes it's some things, it's just going to take everything you got. Tears, blood, sweat, cuts. Bro, it's just going to take everything you got. Yeah. And if you stop in the midst of the opposition and adversity, you'll never get the witness to greatness. That's it, man. The manifestation, right? Breaking generational curses. Yeah. You'll never get to witness that if you stop in the middle of the journey. Oh, yeah, man. man. That's, and don't, be, man, I just love that, man. And you can't, I want to go a couple routes with that because you can't rob yourself of that. And I think the one thing that sets you good. apart is like you, you, you know, you, 
it's not the setbacks, it's not the challenges, it's that you don't expect that there's going to be setbacks and challenges. I Absolutely. believe that so many times our biggest problems is we expect we shouldn't have problems. Mm, that's good. We're going to have good. problems. That's and if you good. just expect it, then a problem comes or that's a good. challenge comes or somebody that's knocks good. you down and you're like, oh shit, yeah, I expected this. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah, no, I planned for this. Like, I'm that dude because of this, right? Absolutely. Bro, do you think that's that God does that too? I know you're a spiritual person, I'm a very absolutely. spiritual person. Do you think that God does, do you think that God... Uh, puts those situations into our life to prepare us those same different ways? Absolutely. Um, I think there's always preparation before for the journey or the victory. Like, so I think, I think oftentimes in terms of when I see something, I'm the type of person that wants to understand, like even with us hanging out, I'll, I'll stop you when you'll share something with me or show me something and be like, hey, Tyler, man, what was the thought process behind creating this? Or T, what was the thought process behind doing this? That's just how I think, yeah. right? And so when I read a scripture, like James chapter one, and it says, consider it pure joy, my brothers and sisters, when you face trials of many kind, because the testing of your faith goes on to produce perseverance and perseverance must finish its race so that you may be complete and lacking nothing. Then I read a quote like King's quote that says, you judge the true character and caliber of a person not by where they stand in times of comfort and convenience. You judge the true character and caliber of a person by where they stand in times of challenge yeah. and controversy. When I see that, it makes me think like, oh, it's necessary for me to become the individual that I'm destined to become. Yeah. Now, I didn't always think about it this way. Even with my own injury, like in the midst of it, I was like, man, what is this? Like, how did this happen? Yeah. And once I got to a place of clarity and peace, I was able to look back and literally connect the dots and see the preparation, right? But beautiful? I couldn't see it in the midst of it. Yeah. But I firmly believe, man, God prepares us long before the journey or the battle even happens. Yeah, that's right? beautiful, man. Absolutely, man. One of my favorite man. quotes of yours is, in fact, I sh one of my like keynotes that I do, like this, like, I don't know if it's the word I'm looking for, but like the presentation that I give, it's one of my favorite ones. Okay, it's a three day, it's like three days that I'm teaching. Mm. And the very last thing that I leave people with is your quote, bro. And I've done it wow. for five years or something. Wow. Every single time I end, I end with your quote, which commitment means, commitment means staying hey. more than what you said you were going to do long after the mood you said hey. and is left, right? Absolutely. Bro, that changed hey. me as a person. It wow. did. It changed me as a person because like you said, the true character comes out not mm. when everything is, going great yeah, man. it's when absolutely. that challenge hits like who are you then man. who are you then right and absolutely. at that moment if you could be like okay yeah. like this is this is a test yeah, man. like okay this is a test absolutely okay i'm right let me if i can overcome this question woo, well i'm gonna question. help all the people overcome oh question so man. i want to talk about some of your challenges in your yeah. life right you talk about your in, in your injury uh let's if you don't mind we'll go there absolutely right? so man. you uh take yeah. this picture you make it do, do you Make it D1 to Tennessee, man. Yeah, man. Bro, you play, what, 10 games as a freshman, right? Crazy, man. Crazy. At Tennessee. Like, yeah, man. Bro. Yeah. And then it's your sophomore year. And once again, what's the goal? The goal isn't just to go to college. The goal is to uh, break generational curses and take care of your family, right? Absolutely. Make sure that your mom's set up, your grandma's set up, your family's set up. Yeah, man. You're in the film room. Coach walks in, mm. tells you you're going to make it. Absolutely. Yeah, man. And then man. take me from there. Yeah, my junior year, man. Um, playing football at a very high level. This is the crazy thing. Like, as a freshman, to come in, if you would have looked at our freshman class, I probably would have been the last guy that somebody would have said, yeah, that guy's going to play this year. I probably would have been the last guy, smallest, I'm like soaking wet, like almost touching 160. Like, I probably <laughs> would have been the last guy in that class they would have pointed at and said, yeah, he's probably going to play yeah, this year, yeah. right? And I was one of the first. Right, played a lot of special teams, got in in some packages as a defensive back, right? Just experience. And so played my sophomore year, obviously, starting, like break the starting lineup. So my junior year, I'm this projected draft pick, sitting in the film room, watching film, assistant coach Larry Slade comes in, two sheets of paper, one states I'm about to graduate in three years, the other states I'm a projected top 30 draft pick. Right? So I go out of the room, call my mother and grandmother, tell them, like, man, this is it. Yeah. Like, this is what we've been working for. I'm about to do what I got to do. Y'all ain't got to worry about it. These next yeah. 10 games, we locked in, right? We done came too far to come this far, right? And, like, I tell them, like, our life is about to change forever. 
And man, I go out my junior year, first game, great game. We get the victory. I play great. Second game, uh, playing against Air Force. Fourth quarter rolls around. Find ourselves in a dog fight. Two minutes left in the game. And I go to make a routine tackle. You know, of course, I'm playing corner. And at the point of contact, when I hit him, bro, my life changed forever. It seemed as if literally everything in my body left. I never felt anything like this before. Like, it felt like I just lost all... It felt like my soul left my body, if you will. And when I hit the ground, I had blacked out. And then I came to, and I just couldn't move. It was a shock going down my whole body. And uh, I remember my teammates running over because I was one of these guys. I was kamikaze, right? I'd go and hit a guy, get knocked down. I was that guy that I'll be laying there. My guy would stand over me. I'll be like, let's go, bro. And I'll <laughs> pop up. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And so they were so used to that. So when they came over to me, it was like, Ink, let's rock. And I was like, I can't. They was like, what you mean you can't? You always get up. Like, let's go. I was like, I can't move. And I'm sure they had never heard that yeah. either. Yeah. And so they were like, what you mean you can't move? Like, come on, bro, you can nurse your injury after the game. I was like, man, there's a shock going from the crown of my head to the bottom of my feet. I can't feel anything. And that's when they brought the spine board out and the shock eventually left my body, but it stayed in my right arm and hand. And they put me in the ambulance. They told me they were going to get me over to the hospital. Things were going to be protocol. And they go and they run tests and they bring me back into a room. And that's when the doctor said, hey, man, we got to rush this kid back to emergency surgery. He's about to die. And I was like, what happened? And he was like, you ruptured the main artery in your chest. You're bleeding internally. Got to rush you back and take that main vein out of your left leg, plug it into your chest in order to save your life. And the next morning I woke up, bro. I had six incisions down my left thigh, one incision across the left side of my neck, one across the right, twice through my right ribs, cut out my right pec bottom of my armpit to the bottom of my hand, 350 staples, bandaged me from my neck to my knees. And they said, when we went in to repair the artery, we noticed you had torn the nerves in your brachial plexus. I was like, what's that? And it was like, that's the nerve roots that go from your spine that control shoulder, arm, hand. They said, think about it this way, Inc. When you plug something into a wall, that's how the brachial plexus goes into the spine. But once you pull it out, they can't go back in. So we hate to inform you, man, arm in hand, probably never be the same again. Football, strong possibility you're done. And I couldn't believe it, bro. Like, I was like, man, no way, right? Because it stopped in a moment, right? I was eight games away from a dream I had been chasing from seven until 20 years old. And it just stopped. Like the movie, I tell people all the time, the movie just stopped. And I had to be redirected and that moment, Tyler, man, that moment taught me so much, man. But it came with so much pain. But it taught me so much that I wouldn't change it. Yeah. 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 Bro. Yeah. This is where I think this, one of the most impactful parts of your journey happens, though, because it's when Inky Johnson became Inky Johnson, right? Absolutely. I think there's multiple times that in your life that Absolutely. that happens. But um, September 6th, September 9th, 2006. Absolutely. Like, people are coming in, and I remember, I remember hearing you at one point saying, they're like, they're asking you, like, hey, man, how, how you doing, right? Absolutely. And yeah. I want everyone to hear this. Like, what was your reaction? So, so just picture this, right? Everything that Inky's just laid out for you, this dream that he has, this, he's on the journey. He, he's like, he almost tastes it because he sees it, right? And then it's... Mm. Like you said, the movie stops. Absolutely. And so you're, these loved ones are like, hey, man, how are you? And I'm what's sure. your reaction to that? Yeah. In that I, moment. Yeah, I'm blessed. I'm good, man. I'm blessed. All right? Like, I just believed it, man. Like, I'm, I'm good. I'm blessed. And, like, me saying that didn't mean everything was going to turn out the way I wanted it to. Yeah. Right? It was just saying, like, all right, man, in this moment, it may not be what I want it to be. Um, it may not turn out the way I want it to turn out, but I'm here. And so if I'm here, I got a shot, right? I got a chance. Like, I could still fight. Yeah. And so I was like, man, I'm blessed. I'm good. I'm blessed. I'm ready to go. And it was like, Ink, what do you want? Like, you can't play anymore. What do you want? I was like, man, can you give me a Dunjoy sling and a Velcro strap? Yeah. And it was like, but you can't play. I was like, it's not about a game. 
It's like, so what is it about? To me finishing what I started. Like, that's what it's about. Like you said, commitment. Staying true to what I said I would do long after the mood that I've set it in has left. Yeah. Right? And so I still wanted to graduate, which I did. I still wanted to go and fulfill obligations with my team, which I did. And that wasn't in spite of opposition and adversity. It was about me finishing what I started. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Oh, bro, that's like such a huge separator at that moment. And um, the fact that, that's how, that that was your thought in that moment. Absolutely. Is incredible. Yeah. Absolutely, right? And just man. the fact, I believe that just the fact of even voicing, I'm blessed. Absolutely, man. I mean, bro, yeah. Yeah. it shows massive faith. You know? Absolutely, man. Massive faith. Absolutely. And uh, faith is, oh. yeah, faith is beautiful, man. No question. Faith man. is beautiful because it's all no about question. perspective, you know? That's it, man. That's a game changer. I tell people often, man, like, I firmly believe perspective drives performance. Yeah. How we view what we do will always affect and impact how we do what we do. Mm. And I often say to people, when you have things that you want to accomplish or do, like we talk a lot about why, right? Why do a person do what they do, right? Find your why. And I often ask people, does your why transcend situations, circumstances, opposition, adversity, conditions, yes. uncertainty? Like, does it transcend so you can continue in spite of what you may face, Yes. right? Like the reason I wanted to finish is because I told my mother and my grandmother, I'm going to be the first one in our family to graduate college. Yeah. Right? I said that. I didn't say, unless my right arm and hand gets paralyzed. Mm. I said I was going to graduate college. Right? And so I still had an obligation to graduate college. I was right hand dominant. Had to go to disability services, learn how to write with my left hand. Right? Came out with a couple of degrees. I told my teammates, man, I'm going to be a great teammate. Right? I didn't say, unless I make it to the NFL. Yeah. Right. Unless I get injured, I'm never coming to another meeting. Right. And people put so many limitations based upon conditions, circumstances and what they may be facing and external factors. Yes. I tell people often, man, like, don't don't limit yourself. Right. If it's something that you want to do, don't let it be predicated upon what you may face. Right. Like, get it done get in it spite done. of the opposition and adversity. Press forward. Right. They got to take my life before they take my drive. One of the greatest lines I've ever heard. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, press forward. And so me doing some of these things, it wasn't because I was some strong, like, incredible person. I was attached to certain things that fueled me. Yeah. And I needed those things. That was my ecosystem in terms of how I operated and how I did what I did. Like, I needed my team. That's why I wanted to get out of the hospital and get back around them. I needed them. They feed, like, they fed me. I needed to be around my guys. Like, I tell people all the time, like, man, do you miss playing at Bama, Florida, all these stadiums, LSU? I'm like, man, I was great. I said, but what I miss the most, like, my people, my guys. Yeah. Like, that's the secret sauce, right? The people that we show up, we work, we battle, and we scrap with every single day. That's what got me out of the hospital. I needed to be back in that complex, and when I walk across that turf, they look at me and be like, that's ink, bro. Yeah. He here, like, he in this Velcro strap and this Dunjoy sling, but our guy's still here battling, right? I needed to see them still battling because we fed each other. Yes. And so people, man, people may forget what we do. People may forget what we say, but people will never forget the way we make them feel. All right? No question, Dude, it's man. it's reciprocal, man. It's reciprocal. No question, you man. showing up made them show up even more, right? Absolutely. And it's, it's crazy because I, I always say that your why has to transcend self, but hearing you talk about that, I think it opened my eyes a little bit of, of to why it has to transcend self. And it's because I believe that life is all about connection, human connection. Absolutely. Like, that's what life is about. So Absolutely. why does your why have to transcend self? Because mm. it helps you connect with other people, no matter what the circumstance is, no matter Good. what the challenge is, right? Absolutely. It helps you connect with those people. And it, bro, so do you, do you believe, because I've, I've heard you talk about how these challenges you face, right, in life, they're going to come, you're going to have the body blows. Oh, absolutely. But those are not meant to be, you know, how do you say, you said something like, it's not pain, but it's preparation or something, absolutely. correct? Absolutely. Okay. Yeah. So is that experience that you had on, you know, uh, September 9th, 2006, is that the biggest challenge that you've faced? Or do you believe that that was a challenge that has prepared you for bigger challenges down the path? Yeah, Absolutely. I, uh, in the midst of it, I thought, like, man, I'll never face anything else like this. And um, 
present day, I haven't faced anything just like that, but I've had other challenges yeah. that I feel like dealing with that challenge has prepared me for the other challenges that I've faced in my life. Like you say, like I always say this, man, like it's not pain, it's not punishment, it's preparation, right? When we process it in the right way, when we get to a place of peace to where we can use it, right? When we look at it with the right perspective, because I'll never forget, man, I said to a guy, um, I was like, man, it felt like I was just in a fight, like a boxing match. And um, God just KO'd me. That's what my injury felt like. I was just in a boxing match, right? Just the journey of it. And somebody just KO'd me, right? And I'm on the mat and I'm looking at my guy, count me out, right? One, two, <laughs> and I'm looking up at him like, man, this was a vicious blow. And I get up right before he's about to wave it off. And I'm like, all right, ain't shake out of it. Let's fight, let's go. Pull yourself together. And um, a guy said to me, he said, man, you know something that's cold-blooded? I was like, what's that? He said, life is going to hit you like that again. Yeah. Believe it or not, in a different capacity. Yeah. You're going to go through something like that again, and it's going to feel that way again. But the previous challenges that you face are going to help you process it and look at it different and know that it's going to propel you for the next challenge. Yes. But oftentimes when we're in the midst of things, things can be so tough that we want to understand it. Right, and it's natural. I tell people often, man, you can go through something so real, like, and it can blindside you. Life sends blindside shots, yeah. blindside shots, right? To where you're doing your thing, life is going great, and your wife can get hit with something, right? One of your children can get hit with something. One of your parents can get hit with something. Just out of the blue, man, somebody can wake up and like, life can just hit you with something. You're like, man, where did this come from, yeah. right? And life sends so many of those shots that when it happens, you're like, what is this? I want to understand it. And I tell people often, man, just survive it, right? Survive it day by day, moment by moment, condition by condition, situation by situation. And then when you get to a place of peace, right, to where you go and you sustain and you're good, then you look back and you connect the dots and you figure out how to use it to add value to every environment you go into and every person's life that you mm -hmm. come in contact with. Human connection. Right? Will you say that part again. Say that Absolutely. part again. That part is, yeah, bro. Man. So will you yeah. say that part again? Absolutely. About surviving it? Yeah, well, yeah, yeah. about then yeah. about using that, reflecting back, Absolutely. using that to benefit others. Like, Absolutely, I want everyone man. to listen to this. This is, yeah. gosh, man, that's one of the most powerful things that, I think it's one of the most powerful things I've heard you say because wow. it, it, dr it drives you to put the next step forward, bro. Absolutely, man. Yeah, Absolutely. say that again if you don't Yeah, mind. man. It's, it's about surviving it, right? So when you get to a place of peace and a place to where you sustain then you can figure out how to use it to add value to the environments you go into and the people's lives that you come in contact with, right? The good book says it. We're overcomers by the blood of the lamb, word of our testimony. That's why when we go through struggles and challenges, it's important to fight to get through them. So when we get to a place of peace, when somebody comes and shares something that we've had a similar experience, even if it's not specific, we can identify with it and we feel certain things from it. Like a person can share something with you you get goosebumps like, bro, like, wow. Yeah. Man, I had something that gave me the same emotions, right? Let me tell you how I got through it. Not telling them, you got to apply my model to what you're dealing with, but I've yeah. dealt with something that's, that's given me similar emotions, and this is how I got through it. Yeah. So, bro, if this can add value to your journey, take it, do what you will with it, right? That's important. Yeah, it's important, yeah. man. Absolutely. That that's exactly what just happened to me when you said that. It's like, I can uh -huh. resonate with it on so many different levels. And all of a sudden I flash back on these different things that have, you know, mm -hmm. these different challenges that, that uh, I've received. And a lot of, like you said this in the, in the beginning, I can't remember if it was on camera, off camera, but you know, you see things that have been put together and people are like, oh, that just happened. It's like, uh, dude, there's massive challenges, man. <laughs> and, that, and that's just this side, like my life, there's massive challenges. And all of a sudden I flash back to those things. I'm like, oh my God, like those things are like, those things are what helped me connect with and impact others, right? Wow. Those challenges have prepared me and put me in a position to impact and help others. And um, wow. I'm grateful for that, you know? Absolutely. I'm grateful for that. Yeah, man. That's a, it's a big deal. What you just Boy. said, bro, is like, whew. I told Boy, you, like, so, I was telling him, I just want to stand up, man. I was like, I want to stand <laughs> up and just freaking, you make me want to run through walls, bro. Oh, man, that's important. Uh, now man. you guys know, and I didn't even yeah. say this in the beginning. I got, but dude, now you know, now you know, you already did know, but mm. Inky's gonna be with us at Peak Partnership. Yeah, man. Now, you, now you know, dude. He's that Can't dude. Wait. Like, he's that dude. He just sees Can't things wait. from a different perspective. He can help you see it from a different perspective. 
And uh, I love that about you, ma'am. Thank you, I Love man. that about you. Thank you, man. Uh, I want to ask you a couple more questions, if you don't Absolutely. mind. Absolutely. Up to. Um, you talk about you, you talk about the process, right? Mm -hmm. the, the process over the product. And, and listen, those of you who, uh, I want you to listen to what he's going to talk to about this. I want you to listen to what he's talking about here because there are messages that are shared and this is the message that I know you need to hear. This mm -hmm. is the message that I need to hear all the time. And uh, if you don't, if you don't mind talking about yeah. the, the, that's what you call it, right? The process Absolutely. of the product. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Riff on that. Man, yeah. So I talk often about process over product, right? Like locking into the process of what we do and not allowing it to be predicated upon the outcomes of what we do, mm. right? Even though the outcomes are great, whether yeah. it be results, whether it be certain products that we're pushing, certain things that we want to do. But the thing that we can never do is allow and dictate how we show up, what we do, how we operate to be predicated upon the product, right? And in my world, the product is outcome, yeah, right? Because what happens is it becomes dangerous, Tyler, when you're just product-driven, right? Outcome-driven, right? You neglect self, you neglect personal development, mm -hmm. you neglect family. I would say to people often, be careful when you're reaching for the stars that everybody you love don't get burned up by the heat, mm -hmm. right? And people will hear that and be like, oh man, what you mean by that? Well, you can pursue success and pursue getting to the top of the mountain and your family, the people that you work with, your coworkers, they can get burned up by the heat, that part. right? Yep. It's the quote that says, be careful you're not becoming a public success and a private failure, mm. right? Your talent and skill set can ascend you to a place that your character can't sustain you, right? Talent and skill set ascend you to a place. That's the product. That's the outcome. You get it, you capture it, you crush it, yeah. right? But you become a private failure mm -hmm. because you neglect the process of personal development. You neglect the process, family man. You neglect the process, fatherhood. All of these things of which we've all done at some point or another. I did it early on as a speaker, yes. right? Running and gunning. And you get to a point to where you encounter something and then you go back and you reevaluate, right? That's the thing about me. I'll never speak about something that I haven't encountered personally, mm -hmm. right? Made a lot of mistakes early on in my journey, right? Trying to get to a certain level. I'll never forget when I first broke into an uh, industry in the uh, NFL, right? Had a gig in New York. Early on speaking, never spoken to NFL before. Was about to get paid more money than I'd ever gotten paid before at the time. And I'm like, oh man, this is about to change the game for me, right? And the date fell on my wife's birthday, right? And I'm like, man, dang it, right? And I'm like, oh man, my wife would be cool with it. Yeah. I'm gonna dress it up, right? I'm gonna make it sweet, right? So when I brought it to my wife, I had already dressed it up, made it sweet. And I've been rocking with my wife since we were young, yeah. man, like fifth grade. So she knows me. I know her. Right. So when I bring it to her, she's like, oh, OK, she's like, yeah, I was like, you think it's cool. Right. On your birthday, I can send you and grandma to the spa. I'll go up, do the gig, fly back, be all good, go to dinner that night. So, like, yeah, go. I should have known. And she was like, yeah, go. I should have known. <laughs> it was too smooth. I should have known. And I was so blinded by the opportunity, the money that the opportunity was giving me, what I thought it was about to do for my career, that I went. And the day played out exactly how I wanted it to play out. Went, spoke, gig went great, got paid, went back, took my wife out to dinner. Beautiful day, right? I would say two days later, I was doing something with clothes in a dryer or something, right? It's a small situation. Might have been a sock or something, right? My wife blows up on me. I had never even seen this side of my wife before. Right? I'm like, what? what? Who is this person, right? And I knew immediately. I was like, that's the birthday situation. She felt like I didn't value mm -hmm. her birthday. She felt like I value the money and the opportunity More than that. over her birthday. And I got it, right? Now, it's going to be moments along the journey to where there's sacrifices to be made and you communicate with your spouse and your family member and y'all are, you know, on one accord and you get that yeah. done. But I always say to people, if you're not careful, process over product, if you're not careful, at certain stages and phases of your life, you have things that serve you well and they're your advantages, right? They work well. Like for me, my mental toughness, my fortitude has always been an advantage for me. My ability, my capacity, my ambition, 
it's always been an advantage for me. I've always been a guy I can come out the gate and I can go like a thoroughbred. I can take my bumps, my bruises, yeah. and Ink gonna get to the finish line, yeah. right? I was the guy, we can come out and you'd be like, hey, Ink, you gonna meet me at the mountain? I'd be like, T, I'm gonna see you at the mountain, bro. Yeah. Go do your thing. And you yeah. can bet your bottom dollar, yeah. when you get to the top of the mountain, your guy Ink gonna be there like, what up, bro? I told you I was gonna be here. Yeah. That was always my advantage. Mm -hmm. But once I got a family, once I got a wife and I got kids, I was still operating by that same model. Yeah. I still had that same thought process, still had the same ambition. It's nothing wrong with it. No. It works well. You just have to channel it. Yes. And I hadn't channeled it. Yes. And so I was doing a lot of destruction along the journey because my advantage was becoming my disadvantage. Mm. And I had to go back and I had to retool the toolkit. Yes. Right? So absolutely, man. Process over product. Bro. Back into the process and don't focus so much on the outcome. Your advantage was now becoming your disadvantage and you have to retool. That's why growth absolutely is nonstop, bro. Do you no know the first time I heard you tell that story? First time mm. I heard you tell that story mm. was because I asked you a question at Arate. Yep. I said, yep. with, with everything that you, you got going on, how do you yep. balance? Absolutely. And mm. I remember that. Yeah, I remember bro, that. Your answer to that, because what you, I don't even know if, if you know this part of it, but I had the same conversation with my wife mm. for that trip. Hey, man, oh. there's this great opportunity, man. I'm going to go, you know, Ed, no Andy, question. No question. you got to St. Louis, gonna be, Ink's going to be there, no question, you know? No I'm like, I'm going to, I got to go. It's like, what's, what's your thoughts? I packaged it up perfectly. No question. Too. No question. And it was our anniversary. Mm. Yeah. And when I asked you that question, uh, it was the day before my anniversary. Mm. Yeah. But I was, so I was going to be gone for our no anniversary. Question. And bro, when I tell you you've impacted my life, it's not just business. It's not just, it's, bro, my most important relationships in my life are my wife and my kids. And oh. you've impacted my relationship with my wife and my kids. I love you forever, bro. I will Appreciate love you forever that, for that. And I want you, you to really hear that and internalize that because Appreciate I that. called my wife that night mm. and uh, right after the class, right after like the event, right? Wow. And uh, apologized. <laughs> wow. Um, and she cried because my wife is the most supportive, loving, question. patient. She's a beast, no dude. Question, She's a beast. Yeah. And... Uh, um, I take advantage of that sometimes, not not intentionally, like, right, but I, meaning I just, I feel like I took advantage of it. And when she started to cry, then I started to cry. And uh, oh. but the impactful thing that you said from it was not just the problem, but the solution. And what you said was, True. now what I do now is I schedule family time first. Absolutely. And then I fit my work around it. Absolutely. Because yeah, they're the priority. Absolutely. And... Uh, and I want to be clear, like, because what you said, there are going to be times where sacrifices are need absolutely. to be made. Absolutely, got to like, make them, absolutely. Sacrifices are absolutely critical to any success in absolutely. anything we ever do in Ooh. life. But listen, 100%. that he, at that point in my journey was, and that, bro, that was last year. Wow. I had to retool. I had to change. And bro, I put date nights in, scheduled first, yeah, before man. anything else. Absolutely. Date nights with my kids. I have a meeting with my, every Monday at noon, she comes in the office, we plan, we prepare. Nice. And Tuesday night, we go to date night. And nice. like, do we have it in there, right? Yeah, it's like, man. I love you for that. I appreciate that, man. No, man, I'm with you. Thursday night is my day. I, I do it. Thursday date nights. You know what I'm saying? I love it. But no, nah, that's, that's so true, man. Like, and thank you for sharing that, bro. Yeah, thank that, you, bro. That means a lot, man. Hey, I want to, yeah. I want to end with this, if you don't, if you don't mind. Absolutely. Because um, you talk a lot about perspective. And uh, um, how you're, how you, and you said in the very beginning, how you view what you do impacts Absolutely. how you do, do what, what you, you do. do. I Absolutely. mean, come on, bro. Yeah, you come man. up with that shit? Yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. I don't know where you, I don't know where you come <laughs> up with these things, but like, I hear how you yeah, say things, I'm like, ooh. Absolutely. <laughs> But bro, it's all the time. Like it's crazy yeah, to me. Man. Like your mind, you just communicate at this level that just hits, crazy, right? Man. But your perspective, and I want to. I just want to talk about this because I, I, I believe that. I mean, there's so much. I can't wait to re-listen to this, man. I'll, I'll tell you Thank that. You, man. I can't. I can't wait to re-listen. I just yes, want like sir. the whole time. I'm a big Absolutely, note taker. And the whole time, I'm like I just want to grab my phone and be like, oh my god. <laughs> but, but I can't wait to. You guys better be recording oh, this shit, man. Cause this is gold. Yeah, yeah, man. My god. But man, I want to talk. I want you to talk about. Um, you're, you go to the Mayo Clinic. Absolutely. 
right? Mm-hmm. And uh, you know what I'm talking about with this? Yeah, you absolutely. Admit, yeah. Do you mind yeah. sharing that experience and yeah. how about that changed your- Yeah, absolutely. And how that changed your perspective yeah. and uh, how that's driven you and how that changes everything that you do every day. Absolutely. So, man, I'll never forget, you know, because one of the assumptions that people often make, Tyler, when they see me and see where I am now or they hear me tell the story, sometimes people think like, oh, man, Ink got injured. He bounced right back, got in the groove of things, and he was just rolling. Yeah. And it's not like that, man. I struggled, too. Like, I battled, too, man. I was fighting to find perspective and peace as well. And, you know, I had to do all these visits, man, um, to the Mayo Clinic. I had to do all these visits back and forth to doctor's offices. And, um, like, they would stick these needles in my back, would die. And so it's two things that happen. So... Are you talking about the situation with what I saw with the little girl? Yeah. Yeah. And so one of the visits, man, I went up and this is one of my first visits and I'm there and I got my arm. And, you know, people, people have compassion and empathy. And if you're not careful, man, people will have you wallowing in your sorrow. Yeah. Amen. You yeah. know what I'm saying? And it could be legit. Yep. Like it can be real. Like you can have a real deal thing that happens to you. Like bad things do happen to good people. Yes. Right. And people will validate that. And people have been hitting me up, man, like, Ink, this is crazy. Guys on my team hit me up. Like, bro, like, this should have been me. I never work out. This, that, and the third. And I'm sitting there, and I'm kind of like, man, I got an arm. Like, what is this? I'm sitting here, and I'm waiting to go back to see my doctor. And I'll never forget. I'm just in it, right? I'm in what happened to me. I'm just thinking about it. And I look up, and I'll never forget sitting, like, not too far from me. It was like a little girl. I had to be like my daughter's age. And um, man, it was like, I don't know if it was her two parents sitting next to her. And I don't know her condition, but both of them were sitting on the side of her. And it was like they were working to hold up like skin on her face. It was like a little girl, man. Like, And I remember looking at that and I was like, bro, you just got just got an arm, man. You just got a paralyzed arm, right? And in that moment, that was at the beginning, speaks to when you say, hey, do you think God prepares us? I'm like, absolutely. I think in that moment, that was a part of my preparation. Like God knew where I was mentally and I was battling. Boom, let me let you see this, ain't? Yeah. I see it immediately. Perspective shift. Or you just got an arm. And the next two years, was probably the hardest two years of my life. I went to doctor's visits for two years and would come in and they would have a different device every week. Two years straight. Every time I would come into the office, they would have a different device. Hey, Ink, we think this is the one. At the time, I had no function, no movement, couldn't feel anything. And I would go in and I'm jacked, right? Because I want some level of movement. I want some feeling. I couldn't feel my arm. I still can't feel it to a certain extent. Like I wanted to be able to feel something, right? And so I would go in and try a different device and I'll be like, man, are you seeing anything? And they would be on the machine. They would always look at me and be like, nah, Ink, we're not seeing anything. That was almost two years. But me seeing a little girl happen like week one of being at the Mayo Clinic. And so the perspective, even if I wanted to walk out of the office one day, And I would have my days like, man, I wish that worked. But even if I ever wanted to walk out of the office one day and be like, man, bro, I'm feeling sorry. I thought about the little girl and her parents that were sitting there. And so even when I got close to the two-year journey and they called me and they had some device and they was like, Ink, we think this is the one. It was one of my last visits. And I could tell everybody around me on the journey was getting weary, right? Because the emotional roller coaster. Yeah. Of going in, it's like you coming into the office every single day thinking you got the deal of your life. And every single time you come in, the deal falls through. Yeah, You're going to ride the emotional roller coaster. And after a while, no matter how ambitious you may be or the team may be, after a while, somebody is going to come in and be like, oh, man, again? Right? And so the people around me, I could tell they was like, man, I don't know. And I went into the office, one of my last visits. I tried the machine. My PT gets up and he goes to walk off my guy, and I jog over to him, and I grab his shoulder. When I grab the shoulder, I'll never forget he slipped from under my hand, and he kept walking pretty slow. 
and I caught up to him and I went to turn him around. And when I turned him around, never forget, he was crying. And he said, I'm sorry, Inc. He was like, bro, we want it to work. He was like, but we're not seeing anything. He said, Inc, man, you'll probably never be able to use that arm or that hand another day for the rest of your life. Several things happened in that moment, Tyler. You said it. Do I think things happen to prepare us before the journey happens or success, highs, lows, whatever it may be? Absolutely. That was two years of preparation, right? With no result. That's where I get my thought process, my psyche, my psychology. When I say commitment is staying true to what you said you would do long after the mood that you've set it in has left. I'm coming every single week to an environment and have to stay committed with no results. Yeah. That's where I get when I would say to people, can you be committed to the process of what you're doing without being emotionally attached to the results of what you're doing? Mm. Right? If the result changes, does it change you? Yeah. That's where I get perspective drives performance. How you view what you do affects how you do what you do. Right? My perspective about the situation and the condition, I wasn't getting the outcome that I wanted. But my perspective about the situation made me show up. Mm. And so now at the end of the two years when they say to me, Inky, you'll probably never be able to use that arm and that hand another day for the rest of your life. I was like, physically. And when I said physically, everybody in the office was like, what? Physic How do you respond that way? Yeah. I have been conditioned and prepared. Now I feel as if I can attack anything and I don't need to be promised a thing. Mm. One of the greatest quotes in the world is when Kobe said, like, Competitors, most of the time I outwork my competitors because they need to be guaranteed something. Most people need to be guaranteed something yes. in order to operate at the optimal level. Mm. They need to be given something. Think about how dangerous an individual becomes when an individual can show up and literally display greatness and operate at the optimal level and it's not predicated upon the outcome of what they may get. Mm, that that individual is unstoppable, right? You can't stop them. Unstoppable. And so, man, yeah, man, like, I'm Southern Baptist, so I'll get fired up. Oh, my up God, bro, you want me? I'm about you know to jump saying? up on the couch here, bro. Yeah, but man. absolutely, man. That's it. Absolutely. Imagine how powerful you can become when you remove, you detach yourself from the product and focus on the process. So many absolutely. people, and this is why I know that people need the message that you have, man, at Peak, and I'm so excited for our network, bro. Ooh, we have man. the most amazing, beautiful people. I'm yeah, so excited man. for you to meet them. They're I amazing can't wait. people. I can't and you're gonna wait. see, man, they're just great people. And if they can just take this focus to what you just said right there and understand mm. that the power comes by detaching yourself from the product and focusing on the process, game over in the Absolutely. best way, bro. Absolutely. Thank man. you, man, for being who you are, man. No, thank you, man. No, no, Absolutely. I want you to listen to what I'm saying. Like, thank you for the challenges that you've overcome. Thank you for sharing those challenges. Thank you for the person that you are, man. It helps. It helps. Thank you. Um, at every level of my life, bro, it's helped me in different areas. Business, mm. fi you know, uh, dad, husband. Like, you just, I just appreciate you as a person. And thank you for being the person that you need to be to help all those around you be the person that they're striving to be, man. I appreciate you, you for that. It means so, a lot, man. Yeah. I appreciate you, man. Thank you, man. pleasure. Such a pleasure. We usually end with a Hawaiian value. Nico's on point over here. Make yeah. sure I don't forget the Hawaiian value, okay? Love it. Which is uh, ho'omau. And ho'omau is the value of persevering. It's like enduring to the end, you know? Mm. And whatever that end is, it's just enduring. It's continuing going, continuing striving. Love and dude, that. you are the epitome of ho'omau. I love that, man. You're the epitome of that. I love you know, that. To power through anything and to have that determination and to have that drive and to just, and it's because bro, your purpose transcends self. It's because you took that accountability to change the narrative, not just for you, but for everyone that is within your circle. And uh, I just appreciate you widening out your circle so sure. the couple of us can squeeze in from time to time, <laughs> my man. Good. So, Inc., thank you so Good. much, bro. So Absolutely, grateful man. and excited to have you at peak. Yes, appreciate sir. you. Thank so, you, man. Hey, all y'all out there. Sure. Share this. Follow this, man. Hey, where, where can they find you first, Ink? <laughs> yeah, on all social media uh, sites, Inky Johnson, Instagram, Inky Johnson Motivate. On my website, inkyjohnson.com. And uh, yeah, man, we rocking and rolling. We stay consistent with content every single week, man. Just trying to add value, bro. Yeah. Oh, you do, add you do value, that, man. man. And all, I mean, y'all listen to this. You you probably already following. Maybe there's five of you out there that don't, you know? <laughs> but maybe there's somebody, maybe, listen yes, to me, sir. maybe there's somebody that doesn't know this man yet. Absolutely. Maybe there's somebody that doesn't know this man yet. Absolutely. And how can their life be changed by you just sharing and introducing this dude to them?
Hmm. Hey, don't be stingy, man. Share. Yeah, Let I them know, that. man. This guy needs to reach the masses at every single level. So share, rate, review. Can't wait to see y'all at peak. And remember, man, live always with Aloha. Peace.